welcome. I'm going to wait till the top of the hour before I start with my presentation. Andres, where are you from? Hi, David. Good to see you here. Welcome. Thank you for joining. I'm going to wait with my presentation till the top of the hour. I'm hoping for a few more people to join. David, where are you from? All right, at least sort of on the same time zone, and it's not uh, midnight for you almost. We are um, just on the west coast of Canada, outside of Vancouver. We are definitely watching. <laughs> All right, um, it is two o'clock Pacific time, and that's where I am. I'm um, located outside of Vancouver, Canada on the West Coast. So um, we still have a few hours to go for this show today. Uh, thank you for those of you joining me right now. And um, I'm just going to start this presentation. Uh, just a few words about our company, Flying Sea Dive Adventures. We are a dive travel wholesaler or a tour operator, as they would say in uh, Europe. Or you could also say dive travel agency, dive travel consultants. We go under many different names. Um, we have been in operation for 23 years, and all we do is dive travel all day long. Uh, there's currently a team of six of us, and we are IATA appointed, which means we can um, issue our own tickets, which is a huge advantage because we're in control of what to do with the tickets, um, not the airline directly, even though obviously we abide by their rules. We do group trips as well as individual trips. Almost all of our group trips that are on our website are arranged for dive shops and just other people can, can join them. We do probably about 70% of our business is groups, uh, mostly groups from um, the US and Canada and then anywhere in the world where there's good diving. And then we also do individual group trips as um, People go as long they want, where they want, either a group trip doesn't appeal or we don't have one to the destination that people want to go to. So today I want to just highlight um, 10 of our best travel tips and actually they're topics about travel and I'm adding um, several tips for each topic. So have sea card want to travel and the things that you may want to know and need to know we're talking about the type of diving to consider and the style of your vacation the destination the timing um, getting there uh, terms and conditions documents dive gear packing and when in rome so uh, let's dive in, pun intended, a little bit more. 70% of the earth is covered in water, which really means that it lends itself to explore um, not just above water, but underwater as well. And if you guys are on here are divers, then you actually fully agree with that. When people ask us, um, to, about a dive trip. Um, oftentimes people will come to us and say, I want to go diving in November and um, how much is the Palau aggressor in November? Well, we usually dial back then and go, well, let me just ask you a whole bunch of questions because really for us, it's about matching you up with the right vacation dive trip for you. Um, what you need and what you should consider. And not everybody always considers all the different um, options that they should. So one of the first items to that we ask about is usually, what kind of diving do you like? 
do you just generally like marine life or are you into big pelagics like whale sharks and sharks and mantas? Um, are you potentially into macro? Maybe you're a photographer. And so that will already determine some of the destinations that you may want to go to. Or are you generally interested in just colorful coral, walls, reefs, or perhaps wreck diving? Again, that would already determine the uh, the destination or at least narrow it down. The next question then is uh, the style of vacation. Um, and generally we divide this into resort based diving or liveaboard diving. A liveaboard, as you may already know, um, obviously is a very different style than resort based. Maximum diving is possible, so it will um, allow you, some liveaboards allow you between four to five dives a day, depending on the destination. And then you will also be able to go to remote dive sites that are just not able to be reached on day boats. Um, to Bataha Reef, for example, in, in the Philippines is one example. Another one would be the Brothers Islands in uh, the Red Sea. So another big advantage of liveaboard diving also is that you are never more than, let's say, 10, 20 feet away from all your belongings. So your surface interval could be a nap in your cabin rather than bobbing on the boat, waiting for the hour to pass so that you can go diving again. Um, there's some really big advantages of uh, liveaboard diving. But then resort-based diving also has uh, quite a few advantages. If you love to roam, go for beach walks, and just generally need more space, uh, resort diving may, or resort type diving may be the better option. Um, if you're traveling with a non-diver, that also typically is a better option for um, a resort. Although we have booked non-divers on liveaboards, because technically as a non-diver, you will see your partner way more often than it, uh, during the surface intervals than if they're um, away boat diving, you may not see them all morning or maybe even longer. And then the difference there also is between boat diving and shore diving. Some people just like to don their gear and be able to walk into the water and go diving from there. And um, that already will determine some destinations like Bonaire, for example, um, here from North America is probably one of the most popular shore diving destinations. So, when we've already had that conversation about those two topics, then we may have already narrowed down the destination. And there are lots, and Fly and Sea Dive Adventures operates in all of these destinations. Caribbean, obviously, for us in North America here, one of the closer options. Socorro, Mexico, that is a liveaboard destination. So are the Galapagos and Ecuador. Um, the Red Sea in Egypt can be done both liveaboard or resort based. The Maldives and then in the South Pacific, Australia, Fiji, uh, Micronesia with um, Palau, Yap and Truk and Papua New Guinea, um, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand and several others in between. But those are some of the bigger destinations and then um, we, as we narrow it more down, this is the coral triangle. And uh, there's a little bit more details on the coral triangle. The Solomon Islands, for example, are just a beautiful destination and lots and lots in Indonesia. So you may already tell us where you have been and that will give us an indication of what the other 
destination for you, uh, destinations are for you that would be suitable. And then the timing or the best time of year to go. Um, there would be different um, considerations depending on whether you only want to do um, diving or maybe, and there's quite a few destinations that are gorgeous dive destinations, but also they have other attractions nearby. And this is something that we specialize in, that we combine your dive vacation with some other soft adventure options. For example, um, you see me on a camel there in front of the pyramid. So diving the Red Sea, well, you don't really go all the way to Egypt and then not at least see the pyramids or maybe even a little bit more. So while you can dive the Red Sea year round, um, yes, there is some temperature differences, but you can dive the year round. Well, July and August is gorgeous diving there, but topside, it's really hot, especially if you're from the Pacific Northwest like I am. And so you may want to consider that, you know, really roaming around the pyramids and um, the Valley of the Kings in July or August may not be the best time. Or you may be diving the Galapagos and you're already in South America and you may think, hmm, maybe I want to go to Peru and uh, see Machu Picchu. Well, you can dive the Galapagos year round, but January, February is rainy, foggy season in Machu Picchu uh, in the Andes. And so that's not the best time if you're thinking of a combination. So those seasonal considerations um, would be important to keep in mind as well. Getting there. Um, a lot of people look at uh, flight especially when they're longer flights, as just the necessary evil, rather than going, hmm, you know, I'm going to make this part of my trip. Well, and then depending on the destination, there may be several different ways you can get there. So one thing would be to keep att attention to the connections. And this is something that we help our customers with all the time because depending on the time of year that you're traveling so let's say for example from vancouver here if i want to go to belize i can have the option of flying through toronto or have the option of flying through houston well if i go in january toronto is a winter city whereas houston not really so i would opt to fly through houston because Toronto may have a snowstorm, the de-icing may be delayed, and all of a sudden I miss my connection. So paying attention to things like that. Um, and then uh, I've once had a layover in Beijing for eight hours. Well, we can help. I climbed the Great Wall of China. So um, there are some opportunities and considerations with connections. Another one is to pay attention to jet lag. How do you overcome jet lag? What do you need to do? Well, the first thing that we always say is get the time that it is at home out of your head. Like, don't go, oh, that's why I'm tired because it's already 1 a.m. at home. No, you immediately in your brain, in your mind, go and um, think about the time that it is at home uh, in the destination that you are. The other one is, especially if you are um, going on a liveaboard, make sure you're at least there one day before, if not two days before, let your system adjust. Um, it also is good for just to acclimatize, um, get there a little earlier, get enough sleep, and that helps hugely with jet lag. And another thing that um, unfortunately people have been caught in when they book their own flights is, especially from North America, you're going west, you will cross the international date line unless you only go to Fiji or Hawaii. 
Um, and that is, well, actually Fiji is you cross it, but uh, Tahiti or Hawaii, you will not cross it. So important to consider to plan properly. We can help with all of that, but if you do it on your own, pay attention to that. Terms and conditions, super important, not just during the time of during, during COVID, but in general, um, super important to know what the terms and conditions are. Is your deposit non-refundable? If it is, definitely be aware of it. And the strongest recommendation is travel insurance. Yes, travel insurance does not cover everything, but it does buy you peace of mind in so many different scenarios. Um, another thing you may want to know is, does the if if you book direct if we don't handle your your payments um do i have to wire money somewhere into a bank account in malaysia maybe um important to know those terms do they accept credit cards or do they not accept credit cards and when is my final payment due especially right now um ask those questions i mean we would always um tell you about that ahead of time but um, there are options to postpone your final payment these days rather than um three months prior to your trip potentially it's uh, it can be negotiated down to just two or three weeks before your trip because of all the uncertainty that's out there Documentation, a huge topic for um, travel tips and one that we definitely as a dive travel company will help with. But um, the first one, always your passport. Don't just look at your passport a couple of days before you leave on your trip. Look at your passport when you book your trip. Be aware of the um, expiration date because a lot of destinations require you to have the val validity of your passport at least six months, three, three to six months from the time that you actually come home. So pay attention to that. The other thing with your passport is that you need to be aware that potentially you need to have at least two empty pages on your passport. Um, we once had the scenario of someone traveling from through Los Angeles to Indonesia, and they were actually denied boarding in Los Angeles because they did not have two empty pages in their passport. And the Indonesian visa that you get on arrival takes up a whole page. So Singapore Airlines wouldn't even let him board in Los Angeles and he missed out on his entire trip. So be aware of that. We will make you aware of that if you book through us, but um, just your passport in important detail. Obviously, um, make sure you bring your certification card. And um, if you, let's say, want to dive nitrox, you're nitrox certified, important to also bring that and not just your your uh, most highest certification card keep copies of things um, of your passport of your itinerary leave leave a, a copy of your itinerary be it your, your flight itinerary as well as your travel itinerary at home with contact information so that they at home know where and how to reach you print it in this electronic age, we usually just travel with our electronic devices and don't necessarily think about anymore that certain things should be printed. For example, if you are traveling on a smaller airline, maybe connecting, um, make sure you print that electronic ticket. In a lot of cases, you will still need your the printout of your electronic ticket. Just having it on your phone is not going to be sufficient. Um, and not just, let's say, um, terminals are down, but um, not all the world functions as digitally as we do um, in, the, in the developed world. And then digital, um, with that I mean, A, make sure your digital devices are charged. 
um, but also take photos, take uh, or have a digital copy of your passport, of your itinerary, of your certification card, of your insurance uh, handy, have it maybe on your device as well as stored in the cloud. In the cloud. Um, we once had someone in Fiji who lost his passport. It was very handy that he actually had his um, passport uh, digitally stored. Your dive gear, uh, tips around your dive gear. Well, the first one question that we always get, should I bring my own dive gear or should I um, rent on location? Well, we always say bring your own gear, if, especially if you already have your own gear. A, you know how to handle your own gear better than any rental gear. B, you know that it's recently been serviced. And with that, I also mean have it serviced before you go on your trip. Um, I don't know how to take my regulator apart, so I definitely trust the local dive shop here to um, get the gear service. Um, invest in some lightweight travel gear if you can, regulator, um, BCD, those are definitely the two to, to start with, um, including your bag, but it would be lightweight. And even though we're restricted often with the weight in our luggage, do bring some spares. For example, um, make sure you have a spare mask with you. Um, some people bring O-rings and, you know, depending on what they're working with, bring a spare um, 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 light, flashlight for sure. Some people bring a second regulator maybe, or at least a spare hose. Um, batteries. If you are bringing rechargeable batteries, and they're not really dive gear, but they kind of go in hand in hand, um, I would suggest that you charge your batteries at home. That always ensures the fullest and best charge. If you are not bringing rechargeable batteries, um, be prepared to actually bring the batteries back because a lot of developing countries, you cannot um, bring your, uh, just not equipped to, to recycle batteries. And so make sure you bring them back home yourself. And then with your, when it comes to your dive gear, remember your local dive shop, wherever you are, um, they exist and we want to keep them existing. So purchase your dive gear from your local shop and get it serviced there. Make sure maybe you even look up what kind of trips do they offer. We do want to support the local dive shop as much as possible. And, and Fly to Dive Adventures works with a lot of dive shops all over North America to arrange their dive travel. And uh, so we want to see the, the local dive shop be supported. Packing tips. Um, about a half a year, well, now I have to say a year ago, I would have not had a picture with a mask on it, but obviously these days we do need to consider that. Um, bring more than one mask because especially if you're on a longer flight, you don't want to be breathing into a damp mask for um, hours on end. Um, bring your material out, look at it, and then only take half of what you actually have on, uh, on your list because uh, luggage is tight. Try to do with um, one bag and ideally I recommend soft bags, especially if you're going on a liveaboard, much easier to store than hard shell suitcases. Um, there's a program called Pack with a Purpose and whether you support that program or you just contact the individual operator that you're working with and and we will make those um, recommendations if you book through us. A lot of uh, our dive vacations are in developing countries and they are always short of school supplies, toys, um, clothing. I know a lot of our clients when they travel, they will actually leave 
the t-shirts in destination. So if you want to promote your, your local sports team, just bring that and then leave, um, leave those t-shirts in Papua New Guinea and you will see what other sports team they're promoting because of uh, you having left some clothing there. So think about that. Uh, invest in some quick dry uh, material. Uh, a, it's lighter and B, it allows you to wash it in between uses. Uh, Ziploc bags and garbage bags is uh, probably one of the most useful packing tips. A, if you pack some things in Ziploc bags really tight and let the air out, you actually uh, have more space. And B, you will occasionally have wet things to pack. And it could potentially be even your BCD if you're moving in between dive sites or maybe your, your gear isn't completely dry after your last dive before you go on a sightseeing tour. So um, those are very handy to have. And then make sure you label your every every bag that you take, including carry on, not just on the outside, but on the inside as well, because tags can rip off in transfers. And um, if they are labeled on the inside, I know from baggage handlers that they open uh, bags and will see if there's anything inside that identifies who this bag belongs to. And then um, make uh, take pictures of your bags, because if you're standing at the airport and to the airport personnel in baggage claims need to describe what your bag looked like. If you actually have a picture of it, it's uh, much easier to, to handle as well. Um, think about your carry-on. Definitely medication needs to be in your carry-on, but then also potentially like, I think there's only a few destinations where you're, or airlines, where you're not allowed to have your um, regulator in your carry-on. But I always try to carry my regulator in my carry-on, my computer. Um, so think about what you want to have in your carry-on as well. And then money. So um, I always recommend that you have at least a small amount in the local currency. When you arrive for tipping, um, not every country will accept smaller purchases on credit cards. So it's good to have some, some money. You can either get it through some local currency exchanges or at least at the airport, um, get it there. And the, the other tip about money would be that you should be setting aside roughly of what you intend to tip the gratuity at the end of the trip, set it aside right away. That way you don't end up spending it because really you should not be leaving a tip on your credit card and most places actually don't accept tips on credit cards. And when in Rome, do as the Romans do, number 10. Consider the culture of the place you're going to. Not everything is the same if you leave your home country um, and just embrace that too. That's part of the adventure of traveling, that you actually explore a different culture, familiarize yourself a little bit with it. Smile is the international language and so do smile often, even maybe if certain things seem a little strange and foreign to you, including food, go and try some of the local foods. If you can and you have a, a, a local tour guide with you before you maybe start diving or afterwards, ask them for some recommendation. But uh, do be a bit adventurous and venture out and try some local food. Learn to say thank you in the language, in the local language, and ideally learn a few more phrases. Maybe even ask the dive guides to teach you a few phrases. And, and usually the locals are very appreciative, even if you can't hold a conversation, but at least you know it, practice a little bit. It, it shows acceptance of the, the different culture. Be aware of the dress code in the country that you're going to. 
there are lots of countries where it's not appropriate if you go into the local village to um, show your shoulders or your knees um, or go inside and, and wear a hat um, or, or things like that. So be aware if, if you book with us for Flying Sea Dive Adventures, we definitely will make you aware of those things too. And then just relax and be gracious. Um, that's the beauty about travel, that it's an adventure. And not all travel will always go smoothly. We try to foresee as many hiccups as there could possibly be um, when we book your trip. Um, but just expect that not everything will be at home as it is at home. And, and just be gracious to the people around you. And uh, a bonus tip, so to speak, use a professional. Can be Fly and Sea Dive Adventures or any of the other um, dive travel companies that are on this show. Uh, we do this day in and day out. We've been doing this for decades. And so we have contracts with the different vendors. We will advocate for you and you basically have another person looking out for your best while you're on your trip as well. So we are there before, during and after your trip. And um, so I highly recommend to use a professional. I would um, on our website, we also have real time liveaboard availability that you could uh, check into group trips for anyone to join and custom itinerary suggestions that we will customize even more for you, um, depending on what you would like to do. And um, even though during COVID time, some people may say, oh, I'm gonna wait till the very last minute to book my trip. Well, certain trips have very low inventory and um, we always recommend that you book for in advance. So here's another summary of uh, the various uh, travel tips that we have. And um, we do have a, a document um, that was published in the Canadian Diver Magazine here, our top 20 travel tips. If you want to have that as a PDF, just uh, register your interest below and we'll be sending that out to you. But um, those are our top 10 travel tips. And uh, we usually say, just imagine, we'll take care of the rest. Thank you for joining um, our presentation here today. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be hanging around here for a little bit longer. So uh, feel free to just uh, chat or if you wanna go on camera, we can do that as well. But uh, really appreciate everybody who was here today. Thank you. All right, appreciate it, Dave, David. Any other questions that I can answer? Or maybe I have left out your top travel tip. So if you wanted to, um, share something else, please do so. Uh, and I know that some of you maybe weren't at the, in the presentation right from the beginning. So um, again, my name is Petra with Flying Sea Dive Adventures. We are located on the just outside of Vancouver. Right, that is a very good one to register with the um, State Department so that in case there is an, an issue, an incident. Um, and in March, that actually was um, quite helpful for people and, and foreign ministries because they knew how many of their citizens were in the country still um, that potentially even needed to be evacuated. So thanks, David, that's a very good 
travel tip as well. Yes. Anything else? I uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation. I guess I could uh, show the last slide one more time. And hopefully you guys are enjoying the show. It's a new experience for all of us, I think. Okay, so here are our top travel tips one more time. Yes. I, it, it, uh, the internet is not stable everywhere, that's for sure. So um, tech issues, yes. And, uh, but I do believe this uh, virtual experience is uh, not the last one that we will be having. There'll be lots more. And uh, even though I think the majority of people that were on this show we're from uh, Europe, and they're slowly going to bed now. I think they had time. The time changed this uh, this weekend. It uh, it's an interesting experience, for sure. Um, we are starting to have interest again, and uh, people traveling. Uh, we had a group of twenty four go to Cozumel yesterday. So Mexico right now is one of the easier to get to destinations because at this point they do not require a, a COVID test. Um, so that's a little bit easier to get to from that perspective. But um, we've been undoing and redoing trips for over seven months now. So an interesting experience for sure. Any other comments and questions? Yeah, two trips, yes, for sure. Um, ah, okay, that's interesting, Richard. I know that uh, there are companies like ours in the UK as well, but um, it, yeah, we do dive travel. We don't do anything, at, well, I should say we do dive travel. And then if people are looking at combining it with other soft adventure, I, I mentioned the Red Sea and Egypt, which really from the UK probably is not your top choice. But um, let's say you go to the Galapagos and potentially want to go to Peru and hike Machu Picchu. Or um, definitely you go to the Maldives, you can do a safari in Sri Lanka and um, or add on a tour of India, for example. Um, obviously, you go diving and we, we've done dive trips and, and in Antarctica, which is not a tropical dive destination. We even do here in Vancouver, um, where um, obviously the Pacific is one of the best cold water destinations in the world. And then we have lots of other um, very interesting and uh, and yeah sightseeing options right here in Vancouver. Um, we often will combine a number of different dive sites, for example, or dive areas. You you go to Truck Lagoon or Chuk, and then you are looking at um, combining that with Palau or Yap, for example. Um, obviously, you go diving in Australia, there's oodles of options. Uh, Fiji, uh, especially for most of us, it's a pretty long trip. So we would always recommend that you don't just stay in one resort, you combine two different resorts, for example. Um, if you do... Um, yeah, that was Fiji. The Solomon Islands, um, you can combine Fiji and the Solomon Islands, for example. Or if you go to Papua New Guinea for some diving, 
depending on the time of year that in the end you choose, you can go and see the Holy Wigman and, and take out some of the cultural festivals in um, as well. Um, so lots of options there also. Yeah. Four times in the Maldives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it all depends on how much time you have, right? And, uh, and what else you, you want to see. I know that there is divers oftentimes when they are um, underwater photographers too, that uh, just say, I want to stay put and, um, and just dive, dive, dive the whole time. And that's perfectly fine. Tubataha, exactly, the Philippines, right? So you do a liveaboard in Tubataha, then you add on a resort for um, a few more nights, absolutely. Um, definitely an option if you were to um, go to, let's say, Malaysia and, and you dive in the Sifadan Mabul area of, of Borneo, um, you know, go and see the orangutans. Um, and many times we also use uh, the city that you fly through. So let's say you need to fly through Hong Kong to get to your final destination. Well, spend a few nights in Hong Kong and explore Hong Kong. The same with Singapore, fascinating cities um, to just stop over for a few days and explore them um, or do a side trip. Um, many times if we have people traveling through Singapore, we will actually add on Angkor Wat in Cambodia for people. So yeah. Do my get or any lao um, as add, add them to a Philippines trip for sure. Any other comments and questions? All right. Well, I've enjoyed having you on my presentation here. And uh, let's see what else is being offered here today. All righty, I'm going to end this now and uh, enjoy um, exploring some of the others. Oh, what, what is my favorite dive destination worldwide? Well, my typical answer is a place that I haven't been to. I personally love exploring new places. And so I will hardly ever go back to the same place, except I've been probably been to Egypt seven or eight times just because from North America, it's a more exotic destination than from Europe. And uh, there has been lots of demand for it. Um, we will about once a year, we will run our own trip for dive shop owners, which we call a fam trip. And so I will take dive shop owners to explore a destination that they haven't been to. And it's often been Egypt and the Red Sea. All right, guys, I'm call it, gonna call it quits here and uh, see you hopefully at some point. Maybe I, I will display our contact information one more time here. So that you are aware of how to contact us if you would like to, flyingc.com. That's the easiest to remember. Thank you. Thank you.